Before I do um, Game Awards, dude, look at this. Wait a minute, I didn't see this. Exclusive, Blizzard reveals the first ever theme songs for Overwatch Champion Series Esports. Listen to the new tracks now ahead of their live orchestral premiere at OWCS Finals. And then there's a link. There's no links to the song on there. Fucking based flare. <laughs> get him. Fucking get him. Okay, hang on. Where's my dark reader? DMCA? Yeah, I guess my question is would it be DMCA? I don't actually know the answer. I would assume probably yes, but Blizzard, if Blizzard owns the rights, it should be good. Yeah, well, the last few times Blizzard told me music would be fine and they would handle it, I got DMCA striked and I never got it back. So, like, I, I'm not, I'm a little skeptical. Just saying. Blizzard shakes up Overwatch esports with two hype anthems. For sports fans of every kind, a memorable theme song is, is essential. It can be the sound of their childhood, college dorm, or weekends with the friends. Even people who don't watch professional sports know the melodic hooks of NBA's round ball rock or the triumphant horns of the drumline of NFL on Fox, if only through cultural osmosis. Wait, what is the round ball rock? Wait, I can't even picture it in my, I can't even think of it. Oh. I did, I did not mean to click on that. That was a f that was almost a free trip to ed to DMCA land. Holy shit! Uh, my bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I did not I did not want to go there. Uh, with that, a huge part of any new sports league is finding the right theme song, one that will stick viewers carrying th or will stick viewers carrying them through victory and sorrow, and worming its way into the back of their mind after endless hours of repetition. You know Round Ball Rock, brother? I just can't, I can't think about it. I just can't figure it out in my head. I probably do, but. For the recently launched Overwatch Champion Series OWCS, that song is yet to be revealed. Founded just this year, or just this year, at the Global Competitive Esports Tournament for Overwatch 2, the OWCS is celebrating the end of its inaugural season with a gift for fans in the form of not one, but two official themes intended to become the sto or sonic staples of circuit play and official broadcasts and are potentially synonymous with Overwatch for years to come. Oh yeah, so if it's DMCA, we're literally gonna get DMCA on every OWCS thing uh, from here on out for the rest of time. Both songs come from Dutch composer Justin Welgren, who previously worked on collaborations with Overwatch's developer Blizzard Entertainment on the music for games like World of Warcraft in coordination with Blizzard's own music team, led by director Derek Duke. The track aims to elicit this hype of an esports anthem, while staying true to the sweeping heroic sounds of the original score. Rolling Stone has the exclusive premiere of both tracks, which can be heard from the time or heard from the time below. Heard for the time for the first time below. Jesus Christ, I missed the first. Ahead of their reveal, we spoke with Derek Duke and Justin Welgreven as they as well as they heard as well as the head of the Overwatch Esports, Sean Miller, as the songs were made to invoke the spirit and legacy of the game and inform future. This is a lot. The first song is titled OWCS Anthem and will serve as the hero track for the tournament series. It will also be the victory track that plays when a team wins a round, making it one player, making it one players and fans will want to be hearing a lot. This is a lot for just a, a song. I'm not going to lie. Like this is like a, this is, this article honestly deserves like a PhD in yappage. The song invokes the bombastic highs and orchestral sweeps that are part of the DNA of Overwatch's in-game music, which fans and players are deeply familiar. For Sean Miller, the song immediately struck a chord emotionally. When I first heard this, oh my god, the song for Overwatch Champion Series, it felt like the perfect combination of this competitive, asper aspirational, magnetic field that we've been really trying to shape OWCS to be. Combined with the optimistic, futuristic kind of feel the game has come to represent, he says. I, coming from me, that's a lot of yappage. The anthem is intended to not just align with the heroic tone of the game, but with the highs and lows of the esports journey. For Derek Duke, it's important for the main theme to drive home a specific feeling of pride. It's about the function. Make sure, making sure that it has that victory moment, that ultimate punctuation mark, Duke says. The anthem is the ultimate celebration and victory moment as the perfect more. Conversely, the second track titled OWCS Overtime serves a different purpose. While the OWCS Anthem invokes the highs of something like an NFL broadcast intro where no one's speaking, Overtime deliver delivers a powerful, more synthetic baseline that can keep listeners hooked even when game or commentary is layered on top. While Graven calls Overtime a more modern track with more drum and bass, 
but both songs have their own place. Paul Barter of its dynamics, Walgreven says, overtime goes up and down a bit more, whereas the anthem has this bass line of power in the track that's just higher. It just keeps pushing forward and it wants to capture your attention all the time. There's more! For both tracks, it's about capturing the victorious anthematic feeling, he adds, Delivering the tournament's official theme songs towards the end of the inaugural season might sound strange, but in some ways is fitting for OWCS, which has spent the year finding its footing. The first iteration of Overwatch Esports, Overwatch League OWL, oh god, was founded in 2017 and ran for six seasons before shut shuttering after struggles in a post-pandemic era. OWCS in is the successor to Overwatch League and the first Overwatch competitive circuit to be run independently from the game's publisher, Blizzard Entertainment. You know what would be crazy? If they put all the teams in a single spot and have them all live there and they could all play on like a stage and play LAN all the time and then they broadcast that LAN from that spot. Wouldn't... That sounds like a, like a cool idea. I don't know. Just came up with it on the spot. A, a new chapter for competitive Overwatch community. There's been an impetus to set or to set OWCS apart and define its identity. Part of that is the theme song. Whereas previous Overwatch League tracks may have aspired to feel that NFL or NBA type of hype, the music for OWCS is intended to sound truer to the game. It's really important as we develop this song that it needed to feel and sound like Overwatch, Miller says. Having this song like a traditional sports league theme song was actually not high on our list, whereas may maybe previous iterations of Overwatch Esports, that would have been more important. For us, the focus is now staying connected to the authentic and game and the game more than anything. Although the song can now be heard online and will soon be incorporated into the series broadcast, there's another surprise in store for fans. The tracks that will be played live with a full orchestra for audiences the first time during the OWCS Championship Series 2024 Finals. Oh, actually, that's kind of cool. They're going to have a whole ass orchestra. <laughs> They're going to have a whole ass orchestra playing. <laughs> I don't know why. That just seems so funny to me. Uh, taking place at DreamHack Stockholm from November 22nd to 24th, Miller says that everyone who has worked on the songs is excited to bring them to fans in person and those watching online as a reward for supporting OWCS through its kickoff. Though the future of Overwatch Esports is unwritten, it remains an inclusive and competitive game that brings out the best in its fandom, Miller says, this, or feels the same about the game itself. To me, Overwatch represents uh, as a game, as a world, and the heroes that are in it. Uh, the game just resonates with my own value, and my own, look, own look, outlook on life, Miller says. The sense of optimism, it's accessible, it's eccentric. There are all words that come to mind when I think of Overwatch. And it's hooked me back, or hooked me back in 2017 when I first started playing. A lot of what keeps me playing is just the positivity of it. Damn, positivity of Overwatch, that's, wow, that's crazy. I have gotten word that we should be good. Which one is this? So this is Anthem? All right, okay, let's go, we should be good. It definitely does have more esports vibe. I understand it now. I get it. I see it now. Is it crazy to say this would belong on an Apex Legends dropping out of a jump ship? I can see it. I can definitely see it.
That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, do we have the other one as well? Is the other one also available or no? All right, this is the other song uh, for Overtime. Well, hang on. It's called Overtime. Are they actually playing this during Overtimes, though? Can you give it any more juice? I can try. Here, I will juice it as much as I can on my end. It's just kind of quiet. Although, so this one already feels a little bit louder, though. This one's definitely louder than the previous one, <laughs> at least in my headset. things I've ever read. I'm not understanding the hype, I'd rather just play my own music. Never mind, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even going to go near that one. <laughs> we'll leave that one right where it is. That was so funny, I can't, I'm dying. That was pretty good though. Okay, it's actually better than I expected. I'm not gonna lie, the bar was kind of on the floor. Uh, at least for me, <laughs> but... <laughs> it was good, they actually cooked. We should've just, wa we should've just jumped in and listened to it right away, instead of reading the article. The article was about 90 minutes of yappage. Not, 90 minutes... 9... 90 minutes of yappage, so...